Hi, I'm Kinkas and I'm a Synth DIY guy. Welcome to today's video, which is installment number four of our series of videos about teaching synthesis and sound design with the Bowfrog XL by Erica Synths. This giant behemoth we have right here with its beautiful oscilloscope, speakers, large knobs, all that. We've already looked at the VCO, which is the voltage controlled oscillator. We've looked at the VCF, which is the voltage controlled low pass filter. And today we're gonna have a look at the VCA. Mainly the VCA, but also its delay function, which is uh, just an effect, it's a nice echo effect that's added to the module. But mainly, you know, as far as principles of synthesis goes, the important thing here is the voltage controlled attenuator, or is it the voltage controlled amplifier? Or maybe is it the voltage controlled amplitude? Well, it's all three, you can call it either way. You can think of it in uh, any of those three words. I personally think of it as a voltage controlled attenuator. And I'll explain. A guitar string needs to be excited. You need to pluck it to get it to vibrate. But an oscillator, as soon as you turn the synthesizer on, it's oscillating. It's doing its thing. So if you plug it straight to the output, you can't really control when it sounds and when it doesn't. So you need some kind of volume or amplitude control. And that's where the VCA comes in. So basically the VCA is a voltage controlled volume control. Right? Amplitude is just a fancy word for volume, really. So why don't we illustrate that? We'll start by just plugging the sine output. So the sine wave from our filter. I'm gonna go straight into the VCA for now. Yeah, and by the way, these are the three main sound shaping principles in synthesis, right? One of them is pitch, which you determine with the oscillator. The other one is timbre, which you have two ways to affect it here, which one is the shape of the oscillator itself, and the other one is the filter, right? So you can create a particular wave shape with the oscillator and then filter it, and then that's, that's defining the timbre, the quality of the sound. And then amplitude, the volume, is the third one. These are the big three. I mean, there are other aspects as well, like duration and uh, other things like that, that you can uh, investigate and find out as far as principles of sound are. But here we have three big ones, right? Pitch, timbre, and volume. So this VCA offset knob here is basically a manual volume control. That's all it is. It's just like a volume knob on your stereo or whatever. Now, this VCA has two outputs built in, the wet output includes the delay, and the dry output is without the delay. We're gonna use that for now, right? If you want the mixed output, then you would go into the master output section there. That one will have the reflection of this dry wet, the position of this dry wet knob right here, which determines how much of the delay you get, right? But right now we're just gonna get the dry out because we're only dealing with the VCA for now. I'm gonna plug it in here. And now I can turn up the VCA. There we go. Now, so now we have that sine wave going into the VCA and we can control the amplitude with this knob. So that's as simple as that. It's just a volume control. Right? Doesn't change the timbre, doesn't filter, doesn't do anything else. However, this is a voltage controlled amplifier. So it's meant really not to be used so much manually as with some kind of external control. So one thing that we can use to control it, like we did last time for the filter, is that actually the modulation wheel output from my analog keyboard here. So why don't we plug that into the CV input. Now we have two CV inputs for this VCA. And again, just like with the filter, one of them is uh, straight in with no control. So, right, now I use my modulation wheel here to turn up the volume. And uh, the other one has an amplitude control over here. It has a level control, which is this knob right here. So this one is for when you want to have a finer control over the voltage that's controlling the volume, right? But for now, we'll use the main unattenuated input over here. We're controlling the pitch of the oscillator with the pitch output from the keyboard as well. So... Right? So I no longer, like before, pretty much the synth was always making sound and I could change the pitch 
but I can never stop it from making sounds. Now I can. I can just turn down the volume this way, right? Now, uh, when we get to the envelope generators, you'll see how a synth like this is actually used most of the time. But for now, this is a good illustration. You can also use, like we've been using the envelope generator number two as an LFO over there. You see that LED blinking. It's just creating a voltage that ramps up and down periodically. It's an oscillator, but a low frequency one. So you can't hear it as sound, but you hear how it affects other things. So now uh, let's pull this out here and just connect the envelope generator output to that input right there. And there you go. Right, so now we have something external, another module, the envelope generator, generating a voltage that is now automatically controlling the amplitude or volume of our synth. Right, and that's what a VCA normally does. Now, there are other things you can do with it as well, right? So for example, you might have heard of an effect called a ring modulator. You might even know what that sounds like. There's effects processors that have that. There's plugins that do it. So you might even be familiar with the sound of a ring modulator. Well, a ring modulator, what it does is bipolar amplitude modulation. Modulation just means change, right? So whenever you hear the word modulation or modulating or to modulate, this is a fancy word for change. So you change the frequency of the filter, you're modulating that filter frequency. So amplitude modulation is just changing the volume, right, in layman's terms. But when you do it at audio rate, like you've seen us do audio rate frequency modulation, right, where we're using one oscillator to modulate the frequency of another and you get those crazy sci-fi kinds of sounds. Well, you can do the same with amplitude modulation. In fact, the AM radio, like the AM stands for amplitude modulation. So you've probably even familiar with the term amplitude modulation. But the way we use it in synthesis can be very cool. So now instead of modulating that with a slow LFO like that, we're gonna use the filter, right? We're not using the filter as a sound shaping device right now for this patch, but we'll use it to modulate. So I put the resonance all the way high. Remember, whenever you want to use the filter as an oscillator, you have to turn the resonance all the way up. That feeds it back to itself and creates an oscillation, a perfect sine wave. And now we're going to take that output. And now we'll hear two pitches, right? But it's not that simple. It's, it's not the two pitches of the two oscillators. As we start playing with the cutoff knob here and the tune knob, you will start hearing how these relationships are very crazy. And it doesn't sound completely different. No, it's kind of similar from the frequency modulation that we were doing previously. Look at that oscilloscope shape, so cool. Yeah, and remember, right now, I'm not modulating the frequency of an oscillator with the other, I'm modulating the amplitude, the volume of one oscillator, right? The oscillator is going through the VCA. The VCA is then being amplitude modulated by the filter. So that's another really cool use of the VCA, right? Now let's have a quick look at the delay. So what I'm gonna do is plug, instead of using the dry out here, we're gonna use the main output, the master output of the synth. And now we can turn the dry wet knob to the middle there. And now, hear that echo? I'm gonna quickly turn up the tune so you hear like a pitch peak and you'll hear repetitions of it. Isn't that cool? Now that even sounds more sci-fi. And you can change the delay time so you can make it a slower repetition. Chuck, 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 chuck. Or you can make it a real fast repetition, right? Which almost sounds like reverberation, right? Like being in a bathroom. Right? And then there's, so that's the delay time control. It determines how fast the repetitions are. Right? So that's really fast. That's really slow. 
And then there's feedback, which is how many repetitions you get. So if I put feedback real low, you get, see you hear like one, two, three repetitions. One, two, three, and it's done. If I put it all the way, almost all the way up, it repeats way more, right? And if I put it all the way up, then it feeds back to itself and creates an oscillation as well. So now we have three oscillations happening. The main oscillator, the filter, which is doing amplitude modulation, and the feedback of the filter, of the delay, sorry, is also... It's never ending because the feedback's all the way high, right? And there's a little bit of distortion there too, which adds character. Cool, right? That's it for the VCA plus delay module. Now, as far as suggestions for your students to exercise at home or to explore further these principles, again, I would suggest to try to replicate the very examples that I mentioned in this video. First, to just control the amplitude or the volume of a patch manually. Also to try to use external voltages, be it from the velocity of the keyboard or the pitch wheel of the keyboard or something external like a joystick from another modular or the envelope generator acting as an LFO. And also to try am audio rate amplitude modulation, which is that ring modulator type sound, which you get when you send an oscillator, an audio rate oscillator. Audio rate meaning it's oscillating at a frequency within the human audible range of 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. And uh, hear those crazy sounds that are kind of similar to the FM but not quite. Now the next video we're gonna cover the envelope generators and that will complete the basic architecture of a subtractive synth when you want to use it in a traditional musical context. So to play a keyboard where you know you hit a note and it makes a sound on that note and then when you let go it stops and so on. Like the classic Moog or Odyssey type bass or lead sound. That's, we'll be able to achieve that on the next video when we add the envelope generators to the mix. And then after that, we're gonna look at the sample and hold. So we're gonna get more esoteric, more into crazy experimental sounds. And after that, we'll look at the utilities, so ten inverters, slew, splitter, divider. And after that, we'll have a look at some of the cards that come with the system. But I think that's good for right now. Thank you for watching. See you soon. Stay noisy. Bye-bye.